Hello everyone, welcome to Shunya IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover a very important part of your entire preparation which is the health sector. Now, after we do this class, you will have every statistic that you need. You will have every pointer that you need to answer any question from health sector. Right? And while you do your UPSC preparation, I would like to tell you that always have, let's say, health. Hai. So, health ke liye apne hath mein kuch das indicators, das data points rakho and just make up your mind that agar ye das kahi pe use hote hai, if I can use these 10 pointers somewhere in my answer, I will use them. Otherwise, I will write the answer in a format jis mein maine data nahi likha hai. Right? I'll just write the schemes. I will not write the data. Don't run after data. And that is why I am uh, making it very clear over here that people, aspirants actually keep on running behind data and they keep on forgetting that they need to write an analytical answer. They need to analyze the problem that is given in the mains paper. Okay? So, always have that problem-solving mentality and always... Uh, with this lecture, I am going to solve your data aspects of health and every issue that is there in the health sector. After this, don't run after any kind of data pointers or anything like that. So, before we start the class, I would just like to tell you how to go forward with the notes. The notes for this particular class, you can get in two ways. Either you can go for handwritten notes. While the class is going on, you keep on writing. And um, you see, writing is not important, right? Just writing is not important. You have to make sure that you go back to what you are writing again and again. You revisit, keep on revisiting it again and again. That is very important. Okay. So, um, if you can revisit your handwritten notes, either it can be on a paper, it can be digitally also. Some people make it on iPad and all or your computer everything is fine whatever works for you is fine but they have to be revisited again and again that is the crux of it the second way is that you can go for the shunya gs books okay wherein we have compiled every topic that we teach over here so every topic that we are teaching is there in the shunya books for example this health part is there in the gs2 book right so you go for these books, they are already compiled and if they suit you, you can order them, right? All of the GS thing, uh, GS books or uh, singular, whichever paper you need, right? That is there. So, with this, let's start. Health aspect of it is, of course, primarily important from the GS2 perspective because, because it is a header in your GS2, health and education. But even in your GS3, it is important because it will help you to overall increase your demographic dividend. It will help you in economic development, right? So, somewhere or the other, you can put some data pointers of health in GS3 as well. And GS1, even in GS1, you can use health-related data pointers, health-related facts because health and the denial of health is something that is a problematic reality of our society. And that is why in the questions of society, you can somewhere put in the health indicators. We'll talk about how. Okay, now let's start the health sector, overall the health sector. We straight away come to the challenges of Indian public health sector. And we are saying public health care sector, right? We are going to talk about the government hospital, the private hospitals as well. Basically, the availability of health uh, to uh, availability of health services to the people. But when we say the public sector, we are going to restrict ourselves to government because you know private sector can be as expensive as it can be. It can be as inexpensive also. It can be free also. Some people do it uh, for free. Some uh, people extend their services for the weaker sections for free. But then there are uh, people who are charging immensely high amount of prices like we saw during the COVID-19, right? So that way, 
वी आर गोइंग टू रिस्ट्रिक्ट आर सेल्फ टू द गवर्नमेंट अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ रिसोर्सिस विच वी अज्यूम आर अवेलेबल टू एवरी वन इन द कंट्री ओके so i'll tell you what all to write if you are making handwritten or digital notes however you are making i'll tell you what to write the biggest problem is that we have deficient health infrastructure which restricts our accessibility during covid 19 you saw what hospital beds mean what hospital beds can do what difference can they make because literally it was like an animal kingdom that was created during the covid 19 people did not have access to beds they were with their loved ones they were sitting outside the hospital sometimes on the roads right and this continues to be a problem because in india we have just 53 beds for 1 lakh people and you will not believe this but countries like pakistan countries like sri lanka there bed to patient uh, bed to population ratio hospital bed to population ratio is better than us even pakistan you know we love to compare ourselves in everything that pakistan does uh, so that is a sad reality okay then another thing health personnel and who is the primary health personnel primary health personnel is the doctor so please write this down that in india our doctor to patient ratio is 1 is to 1 4 5 6 you can easily remember this 1 4 5 6 okay so one doctor for 1456 people who has recommended a ratio of one doctor for 1000 people so there are 456 extra people which one doctor is actually catering to which is a very very high amount of people right then inadequate health services as well for example just write this down that in 2019 the year is pre covid after covid the statistics changed significantly but according to a who report 66% deaths were because of non communicable diseases 66% of deaths were because of non communicable diseases so they were because of diseases like cancer because of blood pressure because of heart attack because of these kind of ailments wherein there is no spreading of course after covid 19 the statistics changed very much because covid 19 was a um communicable disease but this statistic is still relevant because diseases like diabetes diseases like um, hypertension they are increasing and every family in our country almost every family every other family has a blood pressure problem a diabetes problem sugar high sugar all of these things are there high cholesterol is there right so that is a problem then now let's talk about affordability despite us having the largest health insurance scheme in the world the jan arogya yojana our out of pocket expenditure is 48.2% earlier it was and not very far ago uh, far back it was 65% so there has been a massive increase a massive improvement that uh, way but still out of pocket expenditure out of every 100 rupees that you spend uh, that uh, the hospital charges you almost 50 rupees you have to give yourself then what is the benefit of this ayushman bharat uh, scheme right because ultimately problem yahi pe aati hai na ki people don't have that much lose money people do not have that much liquidity that if let's say there is 50000 rupees ka bill and even if they have to give 25000 rupees how many people have 25000 rupees readily available in their bank accounts okay they might have to open up an fd they might have to do anything but then even giving away that 25000 rupees at that point is very difficult and if you have seen you know that movie munna bhai mbbs that is a reality that even if um, and this i can tell you with my personal experience also that um, there was this case of dog bite uh very close to uh matlab to someone very close to me and that bite was there the hand was bleeding everything was happening 
but the form filling process had to be done before they took uh, the person to the opd the emergency center so of course hospitals have their own issues and that is not something that people can deny hospitals have their issues but uh, the the reality is that falling sick or fall you know having an accident is something that can actually transform a person from being above poverty level to being below poverty level and that is why many people went below poverty level during the covid-19 crisis because so much of expenditure was done so anyway please write down high out of pocket expenditure right now it is 48.2% then of course this is something that does not have to be explained during covid-19 uh, there was a very clear trend of very expensive private hospitals you can write this down as seen during covid-19 there were packages 20000 40000 60000 1 lakh sometimes uh matlab 5 day 6 day packages for 1 lakh rupees so that was there then in india insurance penetration is still low although after uh, the jan arogya yojana the ayushman bharat jan arogya yojana um it has increased substantially but still the insurance penetration is very low especially life insurance penetration in 2021 in 2021 the life insurance penetration was hardly 3.2% so hardly 3.2% of our population the adult population has got a life insurance that if they if whenever they pass away their family will get that kind of money that that concept does not exist in india despite companies like lic etc surviving right so that is there then it is a state subject so jurisdictional issues are very very prominent so you would be knowing that ayushman bharat has two elements one is the primary healthcare centers and one is the jan arogya yojana that is the insurance scheme so primary healthcare centers the center is uh, building center is assisting so states are still willing to do that but the jan arogya part many states have denied to actually adopt it right west bengal is one of those states uh, health being a state subject the states have the right to actually refuse to join any central uh, center uh, centrally sponsored scheme right and that has been happening then absence of a single regulator has been an issue for example the national health authority right now is implementing the national health mission okay but this national health authority also this does not have the power to let's say regulate the medical curriculum it does not have the power to uh, give a certification to the medical healthcare professionals and that becomes a problem okay so the there has to be a single regulator and that single regulator is actually very difficult because again the state list concept comes up then another issue is the inadequate funding now if you see recently the funding has increased uh, to about 2.1% if i talk about 2023 the funding has increased to 2.1% of gdp but earlier it was about 1.6% 1.7% uh, but still this amount of funding is not sufficient because we have seen states like for example uh, delhi and tamil nadu and kerala who have had more than 10% of their gdp going into the health sector right so this is very inadequate then interstate variation in spending as i already told you that there is very high expenditure when it comes to tamil nadu kerala but uh, when it comes to the northern hindi belt there is pretty low the expenditure is pretty low there is poor coordination poor research and development and overall misdirected efforts why do we say misdirected efforts because our focus is on curative health it is not on preventive health it is on curative health okay in fact out of every 100 rupees we spend 60 are spent in curative health preventive health is nowhere to be seen okay how can we spend on preventive health we can actually um, you know uh, like we are uh, we have started the eat right movement we have um, 
the conscious building efforts right the one health efforts so these are the things that are starting now and it will take a lot of time to reflect the results of these things but till now we have just ki acha koi bimar pada to we bring them to the hospital we pay the uh, doctors we pay the nurses we maintain the hospitals this is our expenditure that is not how the health sector will grow sustainably i hope you understand that then we are not finding healthcare services in the rural areas unfortunately the biggest problem is that the highly qualified doctors do not want to serve in the rural areas uh, one because they will be separated from their families and uh, second because infrastructure is so pathetic that there you know th this kind of and just think just we tend to judge i've seen aspirants judging that why do doctors don't want to do rural service you tell me when you choose your cadre you know for those uh, who are aware of the interview process just just after you are selected for uh, for the interview and you're going to appear, uh, you've just cleared your mains you have to fill your daf2 and there you have to give your cadre preferences most of the people will have similar cadre preferences and they will be away from the states which are lesser developed right they will be away from the states which are um in the sense poor and in the sense a lot of corruption is said to be there they'll be away from that why as a public minded person as someone who wants to go into the services you should be going for the lesser developed states then why don't you go so it's very easy to point fingers on the other profession and say that you know doctors should work in the rural areas but till the time there is no pull factor till the time there is no pull factor you should incentivize if doctors are going to rural areas you need to incentivize them monetarily incentivize them right that is that is how they will serve and that is how they will serve nicely okay manpower crisis i already told you then there are also interstate variations that i already told you now this is the aspect that uh, you need to write in the problems part then for any question of health you need to give solutions as well so solutions or way forward you just start writing one by one and these are not many points right so you write all these points if you are writing let's say 15 points you'll end up remembering 7 to 8 of them at least so first of all we need to incentivize public health we need to incentivize higher education higher education uh, the mbbs uh, the graduates to actually serve in public hospitals because currently the medical graduates only 10% of medical graduates are actually serving in public hospitals okay so this is a very skewed ratio and uh, that is why see because if you are doing private practice you end up getting paid more also so that is there and then if incentives are not there why would you actually work in that particular public health uh, facility so that's why you have to incentivize then policy focus you need to write these terms policy focus has to shift from curative to preventive policy focus has to shift from curative to preventive because only then if we do not want to increase if we are not able to increase our expenditure on health then the only way we can create a good healthcare system is if we are able to create a good preventive healthcare system people should not need to come to the tertiary hospitals right i hope you understand that then empower the local bodies like panchayats and municipalities so like the delhi model we saw that um, the uh, the small booths the small um, healthcare booths that were there they were pretty successful but then because again you start a scheme and you gain a gain a lot of attention because of that scheme but ultimately you're not able to maintain that scheme right so this should not happen if you have started in the health sector something which is functioning something which is good you need to keep those centers clean you need to keep those centers functional you need to pay the people well who are functioning there right so that, for that you need to enhance the municipal budgets you need to enhance the panchayat budgets so it's all a cycle 
ओके कम्युनिटी अप्रोच टू हेल्थ केयर हैज टू बी अडॉप्टेड ओके जस्ट लाइक द आंगनवाड़ी सिस्टम जस्ट लाइक द आशा वर्कर सिस्टम द कम्युनिटी अप्रोच लाइक कम्युनिटी पुलिसिंग वर्क्स इट वर्क्स इन अ बेटर मैनर देन एडवर्जीरियल पुलिसिंग सिमिलरली कम्युनिटी अप्रोच हेयर हैज टू बी एनकरेज प्राइवेट सेक्टर इंसेंटिव शुड ऑल्सो बी इनकरेज तो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ Why do most of the hospitals want to be opened near the metropolis or near the million plus cities? Why? Because they know that there are people who are willing to pay more who are living there, right? So, for example, I live in Delhi NCR. You will see the biggest of hospitals in Noida and Gurgaon, right? Because comparatively higher level income people are living there. Why? not to incentivize the private players to actually open up their branches in the rural areas not big branches but maybe small mohalla clinic sort of a model and uh, incentivize them for that how to incentivize give them tax benefits give them tax holidays okay you can um you can uh, reduce their uh, land tax you can eliminate their land tax from be 5 years so these kind of push factors push towards the rural areas why would someone not go for opening um, this particular rural branch if they are getting tax benefit in their other businesses right so that can be done then treatment costs have to be regulated okay even in ayushman bharat we are seeing that um, the non impaneled uh, the non impaneled hospitals the private non impaneled uh, impaneled hospitals they are actually charging very high and there is no cap on it so just like it has happened with the nursery admissions in delhi you know there have been caps now that you cannot ask for any random amount of money from the parents of nursery children similarly treatment cost have to be brought down price regulation has to be done and insurance penetration needs to be increased 3% life insurance penetration is actually nothing so we need to aware we need to make people aware that you need life insurance to take care of yourself and your family right and overall the implementation bottlenecks we need to get over the implementation bottlenecks in the sense that center versus state um uh, you know tug of war that keeps on happening that has to be there that has to be tackled special focus has to be on preventive uh, medicine also on the indigenous ayurvedic medicine ayush systems right also on certain sections of the society like women and child the women and children who are actually going to take forward the um, economy right who are actually the beginners of our demographic dividend they need to be focused upon right so that has to be there increasing the budget definitely the budget has increased to 2.1% but it has to reach a level of about 5% although the immediate goal is 3% but uh, it has to reach at least 5% because developed countries and happy countries overall there are governments who are paying 50% of the entire healthcare cost and everything you don't have to worry at all right the, in those countries like sweden norway denmark these kind of countries even if you are in the middle of an accident you don't have to worry that oh my god now my entire savings will be gone government is there to take care of you right and that should be uh, happening here as well then public private partnership and dedicated emergency response like for example there is 911 in the us and 911 in the us is so famous and so efficient that for any kind of problem any kind of problem there is fire in your house there is medical emergency anything at all you dial 911 is just one number that you need to dial this kind of an emergency service and functional emergency service is required because we have a separate number for the police we have a separate number for the ambulance we have separate number for women uh, helpline that does not work in distress everyone should know that this is the number that we are going to dial okay so this is the way forward now whenever you are completing an answer on health 
you can give within way forward some very good case studies of a few countries uh, so for example you can see and you can see overall these countries these three countries that we are going to talk about they are very well known for their good standard of living okay so for and the model is pretty much same in new zealand the state sponsors the health so it is state sponsored health is state sponsored and how do they get money for that they get money through taxes so for example when swachh bharat mission was introduced in india there was this swachh bharat tax uh, cess that was applied why not to apply this kind of cess for health and overall well being but then there has to be a faith also right that um you will utilize these taxes in a good manner you should not be just accumulating these taxes and using this for corrupt purposes so that is also a problem then same model is followed in denmark also you provide free healthcare and in australia there is a very clear system that the government will provide for at least 85% of the opd cost what is opd outpatient department you go you visit the doctor and you are not admitted you are uh you go out of the hospital right if you are into opd 85% of that will be given by the uh state so just imagine how how much relief and it's not just that it is for formality actually the people have faith over there on the capacity of the state then 75% of expenses when you are admitted in a public hospital will be taken care of by the government very very big deal and it makes a lot of difference it establishes so much faith in the people of the country that okay the government is there to take care of us right so uh, that is there and for health that is the amount of data that is the amount of statistics that you need you do not need anything more than that because these statistics that i gave you you will be able to apply them across the answer so for example the out of pocket expenditure the insurance uh, penetration things like um, the doctor to patient ratio and these bed to uh, population ratio these will be fitting in in any question of health so now your focus should be to go into the micro topics of health and be prepared for as many of them as possible right so yes that is all for today's class i have already told you about the notes you can uh, scroll to the beginning part of the video and find out how you can get the notes for this and i hope you found this class helpful i'll see you all in the next one uh, take care everyone and thank you for watching bye bye